Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are diving into Gen 3 spark tuning. This is the third part of the Gen 3 specifics. We've done mass airflow, we've done volumetric efficiency or speed density, and then we now move over into doing timing adjustments, spark tuning, all that stuff. So stick around. Everybody, welcome back to the garage, and I just wanted to take a minute to thank all the new subscribers out there. We've just been getting droves every day. You guys are awesome. Also want to thank the new patrons. If you're interested, uh, check out the link below to our Patreon. We've got a drawing happening at the end of the month where we're giving away the GT45 Turbo that we use for the Project Super Auto build. So if you want a chance to win that, check that out. But as I said, thanks for all the new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button down below. Make sure and click the bell to get notifications whenever new videos go out. But for now, let's get the disclaimer out of the way and then dive into tuning spark. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I've got pulled up here. It looks like a 2003 Silverado. Uh, this is probably stock, uh, but a P59 ECU. The P01 is going to be about the same. All Gen 3s are pretty much going to be the same on this. So this is pretty straightforward. The big thing about tuning for Spark, though, is to make sure beforehand that you have all of your fueling dialed in and spot on. If you have fueling issues before doing Spark or while you're doing Spark, you're going to actually get bad readings because you can be creating false knock and things like that because of the fueling. So make sure, get your fueling dialed in, get all that stuff knocked out. Uh, the other thing about that, you know, doing Spark, and I've talked about this in some of the other videos, is this is not the most efficient way for tuning uh, Spark. Your ignition, really what we do on this whenever we don't have access to a dyno, normally if you have access to a dyno, you make adjustments until you see your power uh, peak out, and then that's kind of whenever you know that you've reached the max amount of advance that you can do on your setup. Since we don't all have access to a dyno, what we tend to do is we just keep on adding advance until we start seeing spark knock, then we pull the spark back a little bit, and that's the most advanced that we can run. That doesn't mean that that's the, the peak power that can be made on ignition uh, time in advance. So this, as I said, is just kind of how to get it dialed in uh, for street tuning. So if you don't know how spark works, basically what you're doing is you are setting the timing in which the spark plug triggers to ignite your mixture. And as you, uh, as your RPMs get higher, you have to advance that spark in uh, basically anticipation of having max uh, ignition at high, at max compression. So it's kind of like we're trying to time it perfectly so that as the piston rams up and compresses everything, we need to kind of pre-ignite that mixture so it hits its max amount of power at top dead center of the piston to drive that thing down. That's kind of a loose way. There's, you know, more, uh, there's a more elaborate explanation out there. I'm, that's not what we're here for. I'm not going to get into that, but that's why we advance timing. But since we can't see the power directly, and especially on the Gen 3s because they don't have, they don't, they are not torque based. We just have to make some uh, general assessments or uh, guesstimates on when we can uh, advance more power. So I've got this opened up. And we are under the engine, spark, and advance tab here. We're basically just going to be working with the high octane and low octane tables. Uh, one of the things that you can do is to make them match. Uh, this is just basically looking at octane performance. And in fact, I think they already match on this setup. I'm looking here. Yeah, there's a little more advanced up in the higher cylinder air mass stuff. But as I said, I like to generally make these things match because I'm always going to be running 93 on my, my stuff. If you are running uh, 89 and 93, you might keep the differential the same between these, but you can still make the changes uh, across the two. You don't have to make a match, but if you add two degrees to the high octane, you can add two degrees to the low octane, or you can just tune the high octane table and leave the low octane table stock to be safe. But what we're going to do is we've got all these other uh, correction tables and these are uh, additive on top of the base one. So anything that you make to your base high octane table is automatically going to shift the other one. So if we have a flex field table here where we're getting 16 degrees in advance 
at this cell right here, that is in addition to the base uh, table already. So if, and so we're not looking at 16 degrees, we're looking at 16 degrees plus, which is probably 11 degrees in there, so we're actually 27 degrees. So if we change this area over here, uh, you know, to 13, it's gonna be 13 plus 16. So I don't ever really worry about the base correction stuff. I leave that, I just focus on the high octane table. So that being said, we need to set up the histograms for this. Uh, let's go ahead and open up our high octane table. We'll jump over to the scanner. The scanner, this is a scanner for a different vehicle, but the same setup. And that's because this scan already has the PIDs that you need to log. The PIDs that you need to be logging are cylinder air mass, and in this case on the Gen 3's RPM, timing advance, knock retard. Let me clear these graphs out. We don't need all these, and we're going to reproduce this spark retard map uh, specifically to this setup. So let's go in here. Let's add a new table. And our main parameter for this one is going to be timing advance. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Timing advance. Here we go under spark and ignition. We will use the generic one. And then on the column axis, we want to jump back over, look at our base talk, and it's just going to be RPM. So we will copy the labels off our column axis. Ax axis. Blah, blah, blah. I can't talk today. Sorry, guys. And we'll put RPM in here. Yes, we'll use the generic and then paste in our separators there. And then same ordeal for the row axis, we're going to be cylinder air mass. So let's copy that one over, cylinder air mass. There it is. Use the generic one and it's in grams. Let's check our table. It's in grams also. We will copy our row axis over and then paste that one. So this is going to be our advanced table. Save that one, and then we're going to go ahead and add another one right below it. In this one, we're going to grab knock. We're looking for knock retard. Use the generic. I'm just just use the generic on all these. That's perfectly fine. And same ordeal. This one's going to be cylinder air mass. We can paste those back in, and then RPM. And I will just grab the RPM from the advanced table, copy those over, control A, control C, and then control V, and we're done. We've got two graphs here. The advanced table lets us go in and look and make sure that we are hitting the advance that we should be. This is I like to do this uh, just to kind of give an idea of whether or not we are uh, achieving the maximum amount of advance that we should. As long as you're... Uh, spark retard table is empty which this one's not and I'm going to show you something we're going to go in on the retard table and we're going to do a high value we're going to put that to 10 and we're going to make it red and the reasoning behind that is is now well let's put it a little bit lower, less than 10 let's try it we'll put it to 2 there we go, that's better. So now we've got some red shading where we have some knock. And as you can see on this one, there is some knock. This is the amount of timing that is being pulled out of the timing table because there is detected knock in there. And so what we'll generally do is we'll come back into this table and on the base one, select the whole thing. And I like to add, say one or two degrees to the whole table. Boom, add a degree in there and then go out and log using these two histograms. You can use this one to make sure that you're, you're seeing good numbers in there. You should be achieving kind of what your base table is plus any modifiers. So if you are, uh, if everything is working right, you should see higher than numbers than what's actually in your base table usually because there's going to be those additional tables on there. Uh, so you might have some for IAT and engine coolant temp. Most of those are going to pull timing as you can see, but on this one, there's actually some additional timing in there. So in this range, because of ECT, if you're running cooler, it will add some timing. If it starts running hot, it will pull timing. So if you open up your scan and you look at it and it looks like you are getting less than what is in your base table, something is causing you to pull uh, timing out. And that's when we jump over to the retard table, and if there is nothing in that area showing that it's knock, that means it's something else. IATs are too hot, uh, engines running too hot, things like that. We can then investigate some of the different things that might be causing. And that's the cool thing. You can go back into your log. You can log your engine coolant temp, your, M, you know, your IATs. Like, we're at 199. We can use that to reference back to our ECT 
And at 199 to 203, we should only be pulling zero to one degrees of timing from the base table. So if you're pulling more than one degree of timing from the base table, check out your IAT temperatures. Uh, we're at 88 degrees in this, this example, so we could look at our IAT. And at 88 degrees, it would pull one to two degrees of timing from right there. So you, you can kind of go through all those and see how much timing should be being pulled out from that area of your table. And if it's pulling out more than that, you might have an issue that you need to track down. But the big thing that we do to uh, tune this is use the retard table. And we come in here, we do a log, we uh, look for spark retard, and then we bring some timing back out if need be. In this case, this isn't really all that bad. There's nothing exceeding one degree of timing pull. So uh, this, thing, this, this guy's setup is probably, he's already dialed his timing in on this one. And so he's probably reached peak timing and has pulled one or two degrees back out. But if it were higher than that, then I would consider, say, if, you, if these were all up by, uh, you know, two degrees of timing, four degrees of timing, three degrees of timing, stuff like that, then I would go back in and start subtracting timing. And you can do that by uh, copying the whole table and going over to your base and then selecting that and do paste special subtract. And that will take all the timing out if you are high enough. If you have at least one degree plus of timing, it will subtract that out. Or you can go in and hand do it where you look at the areas where you have issues. So we're really kind of in this 36 to 44 area. There's some right there. So I might go in on this table and go 36 to 44. And I might put negative one up there and then you add negative one and that subtracts one across that area. Then I go back out and redo this until I get a clean table. So that's kind of the big thing is getting to the point where you max out your timing in your base table and then once you start seeing knock, you know you're kind of on that top end where you're getting pre-detonation. Basically you are igniting the mixture too early and it is causing engine knock and then we want to bring the timing back from there. And that's a good kind of baseline for uh, dialing in timing on the street, you know, kind of street tuning it as opposed to dyno tuning. So pretty straightforward timing is the easiest thing I want to say that we do as far as tuning, but it is very important that all of your fueling set up good to go from the, from the get go. Uh, hopefully I haven't stumbled around too much on this description. If you guys need any clarification stuff, just let me know. Also check out the tuning guide. There is a general timing thing that goes into more detail on some of this stuff. This is just the Gen 3 specific where we sit the set the histograms up just for a Gen 3 platform. Look at how it would look for you guys out there that are tuning the Gen 3. So that kind of wraps up the uh, main engine tuning that we do on the Gen 3s just on base level tuning for fueling and timing. You know, there's a lot of other stuff that we'll eventually get into as far as idle tuning, cam tuning, stuff like that. But this is the stuff that will get you going uh, whenever you get into tuning your own vehicles. And honestly, you can tune about everything just off those three steps. You know, if you were to add a turbo to a Gen 3, using the math tuning, the speed density tuning, and the timing tuning that we've touched on here, all of that is the foundation for actually tuning your vehicle for any kind of modifications. So just keep that in mind. That's, I mean, that's how I do my supercharged truck is literally those three base steps are how I get everything set up. And then there's some ancillary tuning around the, the outsets that you have to do on specific use cases. So uh, if you haven't already, as I said, hit that subscribe button. Uh, throw a thumbs up if you, if you guys have gotten enjoyment out of these videos, if they've been helpful for you. It, throw a thumbs down if they haven't. If you do that, though, as always, hit up the comments. Tell me what I could do better to produce better content for you guys. I want to thank all the new subscribers, though. You guys have been awesome. Check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel. And, uh, you know, stick around. There's a lot more content coming out. I know, I know, I know. I hear you guys. I will get some transmission stuff out. I've warned you in the past that transmission tuning is not my strong suit, but I can give you some tips and tricks on some of this stuff to get better shifts, quicker shifts, things like that. So I will have some videos coming out there. I need to do some more torque management videos. Uh, I've been falling behind, but I've been wanting to get some of these base tuning videos out for you guys. But thank you for sticking around. And as always, thank you for stopping by the garage.